A, if you look at it simply from, you know, if you seek first the kingdom, everything else will be added to you. Therefore, the, what else was talking about clothes and talking about essentials, as in food, clothes, shelter, somewhere to live. I don't believe that God intends people to have, uh, don't have those essentials. But what are those essentials might be different to different people, of course. And there might be a materialism in our lives that God would want us to address. But he doesn't want to punish us or to in any way harm us to enable us to see. But sometimes things happen in our lives which he will use to bring good out of, and that might be something he uses to challenge. So there could be a sense where someone becomes homeless and God brings something good out of it and they learn something from it, but God didn't intend them or want them to be homeless in the first place. So I do believe that God wants us to have all that we need and an abundance for every good deed. So everything that for, enables us to fulfill our destiny, he wants us to have. But along the way, there may be times where we uh, need to question, do I want this? Do I need it? How essential is it? And therefore, my mindset to do with materialism, to do with my identity coming from what I've got. And people obviously value people externally based on what they have, what sort of clothes they wear, what sort of car they drive, how big a house they've got, what good a job they've got. And they give a value and value people by externals. And God doesn't do that. God treats everyone equally. We're all his children, whether we're living in, in the woods with nothing or whether we're living in a mansion with everything. God values that person the same, but he doesn't value them because they've got something or because they don't have something. He just values them on the fact that they are his children. So we also need to learn to value each other based on the reality of who we are, not what we've got or not what we do. And we do need to be free from the way society programs us to think about people based on those things and have a different view of what value is. You know, that someone is valuable to God because of who they are. Um, and we, we've got to be careful that we're not drawn into a Western uh, cultural view of life and people based on performance or how much they have in terms of material gain um, and make sure we're not drawn into that needing our identity based on what we have uh, and not feeling happy if we don't have this and don't have that um, Paul basically said that he was content whether he had everything or nothing because his relationship with God God was his provider and he trusted in God's provision to enable him to fulfill what he called his heavenly vision or his destiny, I would call. Um, and God will provide. And I do believe God wants to provide for us, but our mindset must be one on trusting his provision and not trying to do it in our own strength, in our own understanding. So does God want some people to tell us? I don't really believe he does. Um, and does to do with that essentials of water, food, clothes? No. But could he bring good out of those situations? Should they occur? Yes. But I do believe that he wants us to have all we need um, and to live in abundant grace and mercy and love and in rest. And for some people, you can't be at rest when you're hungry or starving or sick you know, in, in other ways, you know, God doesn't bring sickness on people to teach them lessons either. God is drawing us into an intimate relationship with him, sometimes material things, and the need for more material things can get in the way of that relationship. So he may want us to address what is important in our lives, and to reassess how we value things in our lives and the time we give them. Um, there was a statement that a friend of mine used to make, you value what you do and you do what you value. So look at what you're spending your time doing, and that will be what you'll value the most. So do we value relationships the most? And are we spending the most time in a relational way? Or are we spending the most time in a financial way to get more money to be able to buy better things? Actually, that mindset can be changed. So that actually relationship is purely based on relationship. Intimacy comes from spending time with him, sometimes 
we won't spend time with him because we're too busy doing something else. And those things may be things we need to address. You know, am I spending time doing this? Why? What's the motive of my heart? And I would suggest looking at the motives um, is what God wants us to do in a lot of things. So he may challenge our materialism, but God doesn't want you to be poor in a sense of having nothing and therefore not being able to fulfill what he's called you to do. Now, there might be a, an occasion where God might have someone to live it with in a less uh, materialistic way to be able to engage with people who also live in a less materialistic way because sometimes people won't listen to you because they think you're you have everything you need and they don't so they don't relate to you so we need to be all things to all men sometimes to be able to relate to them now sometimes that might entail identifying with people who are in a different position than us to be able to reach them but I don't feel God ever, he wants to bless us. And to bless us to, means to be empower us to succeed and to prosper. But prosperity is not about how much we've got, but how much we have in relation to how much we need to fulfill our destiny. And God will always want her to provide for us to be able to fulfill our destiny. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.